the Airbus A350, the most advanced commercial aircraft in the world. Its construction, nothing short of a masterpiece, on the grand scale and down to the smallest detail. Two and a half million components, 1,800 professionals for the final assembly alone. Together, constructing an aircraft the likes of which the world has never seen before. The goal, minimal fuel consumption, maximum range. The product of precision workmanship, expertise, and quite simply, pride. And all this is only possible thanks to perfect mega manufacturing. Toulouse, France, the headquarters of Europe's largest aircraft manufacturer. In Blagnac, Airbus workers construct the most advanced passenger aircraft in the world, the Airbus A350. One o'clock in the afternoon, one of the fleet of Beluga transport aircraft arrives with a delivery of components, so-called because its shape resembles that of the white whale. It is key to the construction process, a 1,500 cubic meter cargo compartment and a 47 metric ton payload. An entire fuselage section of the A350 fits in the belly of a single beluga. Or, as in this case, one of its wings. Measuring 32 meters in length, it would be practically impossible to build the A350 without the beluga fleet. Baptiste Ronet must see to it that his team unloads all the freight within an hour. Every delay triggers a chain reaction, disrupting construction of the world's most advanced passenger aircraft. Unloading the unique Beluga super transporters is Baptiste's dream job. I'm very proud of our Beluga fleet. They're key to the entire assembly operation running smoothly. I've loved planes since childhood. My father and my grandfather worked at Airbus. Our family has always been fascinated with aviation. The Beluga fleet flies wings, fuselage sections, cabin furnishing, and vertical tailplanes for the A350 from around Europe to these assembly hangars in Toulouse. 4,500 suppliers and 12 Airbus facilities are involved in its production. The background behind this complex puzzle? Airbus was established in the 1960s as a consortium of companies from across the European continent. Different locations have different areas of expertise to this day. Of particular importance to the production of the A350 are the sites in France, Spain, Germany, and Great Britain. The nose and midsection come from the Saint-Nazaire plant, the tail section from Hamburg. The wings are manufactured in Broughton and Bremen, the horizontal tailplane in Getafe. All of these shipments must be perfectly coordinated. Head of the unit, Nabil Tahiri. It's our job to ensure that all the parts are transported on time. We have to always make sure that all of the components are on hand here. Thanks to our fleet of transport aircraft, we can get anything that's missing here straight away. We need around three hours to pick up a part from anywhere inside Europe. The Beluga provides us with an extremely quick and safe way of getting all the parts we need in a timely manner. Our system is absolutely reliable. Even when everything is running smoothly, the A350 still has to go through seven stations. With 120 aircraft a year, this demands absolute perfection. Everything begins in Station 59. The first stage of the final assembly line. Around 40 workers fit out the fuselage with the large components of the passenger cabin, such as the galley and washrooms, 
Nine such fuselage segments can be worked on in parallel here. Responsible for this work is François-Louis Godin. He oversees each machine for 80 days, from the first assembly step to completion. This is where assembly begins. The sections of the A350's fuselage arrive here from all over Europe. We work on outfitting the passenger cabin from the very first station to the last station. What makes this assembly line unique is that we fit out the passenger cabin and assemble the aircraft in parallel. This change to the workflow allows us to minimize production time. Six thirty in the morning. Team briefing at the start of the shift. Fifteen workers, mostly electricians and installation technicians, divide up the day's tasks amongst themselves. They have to install the galleys, washrooms, and crew rest compartments. Any special requests from the airlines are incorporated here too. The outfitting work is performed on all fuselage sections and shifts. This way, no team has to wait for another. In the tail section of a future A350, two workers make preparations for the installation of the galley. Assembly instructions individually pack screws. It all resembles a bit like a flat pack wardrobe from a furniture store. It's not as simple as it looks. It's very different to screwing together an IKEA bookshelf. That would be great, but it isn't like that, unfortunately. It takes highly trained craftsmen. Even the smallest of installations can affect the safety of the finished aircraft. As such, special expertise is required for every single operation. It takes months and often years to train our workers. In contrast with a cupboard from a furniture store, it's critical that nothing can shift, even during the most severe turbulence. No screw may fail, a big responsibility for the workers. just as it is for the quality inspectors in the adjacent fuselage section. They have to first approve the delivered fuselages for outfitting. But only if every bulkhead, every electrical component, and even the floor is free of defects. The supplier has already ultrasonically inspected it for damage on departure. But a lot could have happened during transport, and nothing can be left to chance. The next fuselage has already been released. Craftsmen seal the floor where the lavatory will later be installed. The film prevents moisture from penetrating the floor. Like everywhere in the aircraft, there are electrical cables there too. And there are more of them in the high-tech A350 than in most other commercial aircraft. There are instructions for every task. Each worker must double check that the work has been performed to the exacting standard. In the first hangar, the teams install components that would no longer fit through the doors once the fuselage is assembled. A resting cabin for the pilots arrives. The Airbus crew installs it behind the cockpit and above the galley. The A350 is a long-haul airliner. It can fly non-stop for up to 20 hours. There are several pilots on board for such flights who take it in turns to rest. Work on the fuselage sections continues without a break. They are, after all, expected to fly away soon. Next up is Station 50 of the final assembly line. The fuselage sections are now ready for their big moment, the so-called marriage. Waiting at Station 50R, Deputy Unit Head Arnaud Herry and Team Manager Wilfried Martin. They have the nose section for an A350 maneuvered into the hangar. Arnaud has worked at Airbus for 16 years and on the A350 final assembly line for six of these. The aircraft is very popular. Over 250 of them have been delivered to date. And there are orders for a further 890 on the books. With this number of outstanding orders, 
every stage of production is subject to an extremely strict timetable. Because of the number of parts that have to be assembled to build an aircraft and the large number of subcontractors, partners and factories that supply them to us, there are a whole host of risk factors. We often have to set priorities in order to ensure that the aircraft arrives at the next station on time. We sometimes allow work that has not yet been finished to be completed at the next station. Our overriding priority is to avoid at all costs the next station being prevented from continuing with the assembly work. Once the nose section is in place, the transport operator maneuvers the middle section into the hangar. Both sections are already equipped with lines for the hydraulic, water, oxygen, and air conditioning systems. They are already insulated, and wiring harnesses are installed under the ceiling. The tail section waits in front of the hangar. In the case of the A350-1000, the three fuselage sections together measure 73.8 meters in length, seven meters more than the shorter version. The operators align the fuselage sections with a tenth of a millimeter precision before they join them together with around 40,000 fasteners. As with the rest of the construction, most of this work is performed by hand. Over 10,000 rivets hold the carbon fiber fuselage sections together. No other aircraft uses such a high proportion of carbon fiber as the A350. Because the material is extremely hard, the workers have to use especially high quality drilling equipment. 53% of the A350 is composed of carbon composite. It's 40% lighter than aluminum and allows much more complex shapes. Each layer consists of super thin plies of carbon fiber embedded in a synthetic resin matrix. And there are several layers, a process that takes a few days. In the aviation industry, composites are viewed as the materials of the future and are increasingly replacing aircraft aluminum. The aircraft is fitted with its iconic nose gear at this station, all in parallel with the myriad other processes taking place. This component alone is constructed from around a thousand parts, primarily made from high tensile steel. It too is installed by hand. Every connection is bonded and bolted for safety. Following installation, the workers check the functionality of the landing gear. It's activated by remote control instead of the pilot pressing a button. The nose wheel must deploy at the same speed it would during approach. The nose gear is now operational. The A350 fuselage must again switch hangers to be fitted with its main landing gear. The workers hydraulically lower the 32-ton fuselage to rest on its support wheels. A big moment. The fuselage of the wide-body jet will soon leave the hangar in one piece. Despite the routine, you're always learning something new whether at a personal, technical, or organizational level. You start each day in good spirits, 
happy to be building these amazing cutting-edge products. It requires total dedication at all times from everyone. The massive fuselage rests on its wheels for the first time, and everyone holds their breath. The operator of the aircraft tractor grabs the nose wheel to carefully push it out of the hangar, just like maneuvering around the airport. 